Hello, I'm Jeremy Vine, and this is Panorama. We're told the world's getting hotter. Droughts and a barbecue summer are on the way. But does anyone believe the claims anymore? Are we warming the planet? Certain, likely aren't? No. OK. A freezing winter and allegations that scientists have misled us over global warming have set the experts at loggerheads. Clearly, there's a crisis. We've been scaring people witless for 10, 15 years. There is no challenge to the basic science. The dispute has boiled over in public. And the question of whether we're changing the climate even divides families. Certain. Certain. Would you agree with that one? I think it's all a, a lot of hype. The Prime Minister says this government will be the greenest ever. But does the hard science and a suspicious public back that stance? The scientists behind the forecasts of global warming have been embroiled in a damaging row over their research. There's been talk of hidden data and even vicious personal abuse. Well, next week sees the final definitive report into what has been dubbed Climate Gate. Tonight on Panorama, we lift the fog that surrounds this climate war. Is there any common ground? The answer may surprise you. Where once we caught fish, we now catch the wind. Britain's biggest engineering project is sprouting from the waves. Offshore wind is expected to cost £120 billion in the next 20 years. That's enough to pay for the National Health Service for more than a year. It's a price we're told we have to pay because the climate is sick and decarbonising is the cure. But do we believe it? For an answer, I've crossed the spine of England to the Lake District. But the poetry here is less Wordsworth, more Cosworth. And I'm going to road test our own high-tech gadget. Top Gear may have their cool wall, we have a wall of certainty. And as a bit of fun, I'm arriving emission-free in my electric G-Wiz. <laughs> So what do you think? Am I convincing anybody? <laughs> Come on! What's not to like? <laughs> we'll, we'll have to find somewhere around the future if that is the future, won't we? How certain are you that mankind is warming the climate? Would you say that that was certain? Would you say it was likely, unlikely or no way? And I want you to stick one of those on where you think it should go. Am I able to stick it halfway? Yeah, yeah. You're pretty convinced, are you, that mankind is changing the climate? Yeah? Oh, yeah. Certain, likely or not? No. OK. You are teasing me, aren't you, back and forth? Pretty certain, just a, a nibble into likely. <laughs> well, yeah, because we're probably out of them, but there's nothing that Britons can do about it. Right, last one. Who wants the last one to stick on there? Probably not likely. Well, it's not a particularly scientific survey, but I think it does tell us something. The opinion here is pretty broadly divided with definitely more up at the no-way end than there are in the certain category. Now, I know you might say these people love their cars, so they're bound to be slightly on the petrol head end of the spectrum, but there's no doubt that the government and most scientists would put human climate change up here in the certain category. So I think this is telling us something, that there's a lot more doubt and uncertainty in the public than they'd want to see. Opinion polls suggest most people still think the world is getting warmer, but there's growing uncertainty. In the most recent survey, four out of ten people doubted whether climate change was actually happening. So why the confusion? First, the weather. Despite the forecast, last year we endured a miserable summer that most of us thought would have benefited from a bit of warming, and then this. The winter was officially the coldest for 30 years. Roads blocked, schools closed, even airports caught a cold. And that was just in the lowlands. Up here in the Yorkshire Dales, the highest pub in Britain struggled to keep a warm welcome. The snow has melted, but the memories remain. What was it like here this winter when the snows fell? Bleak. 
cold. Could have been minus 20 or 30. Really? We did have about four sets of customers locked in. The, obviously, the big one was being New Year, where there were 60 customers locked in. They were sprawled across the floors and everywhere. Longest New Year party. <laughs> So, summer and winter, we shivered and felt slightly misled by our weather forecasters. Globally, it was a warmer winter than average, but that doesn't show up in our goosebumps, and believing it requires trust in science. The UK Met Office got it wrong when they said it would be a barbecue summer, and indeed it would be a very mild winter. In my opinion, there is no doubt that the science is solid and we shouldn't confuse year-to-year -year variability in winter temperatures with long-term climate change. Some of the world's most respected predictions came from here, the University of East Anglia's Climatic Research Unit. But late last year, emails hacked from this building damaged the credibility of their science. So-called ClimateGate was born. A few words were seized on, causing a sensation around the world. One email from the boss of the centre, Phil Jones, talked about a trick, giving the impression the science of global temperature was being twisted. I've just completed Mike's nature trick of adding in the real temperatures to each series for the last 20 years, i.e. from 1981 onwards and from 1961 for Keith's to hide the decline. Other emails seem to suggest Phil Jones tried to avoid scrutiny from his critics. If they ever hear there is a Freedom of Information Act now in the UK, I think I'll delete the file rather than send to anyone. Talk of tricks, hiding and deletion reinforced skeptics' suspicions that climate scientists have been overstating their case. I think we saw the nasty underbelly but I think also, and perhaps more importantly, it showed us that climate science is certainly not absolute and definite. What was definite was just how nasty the debate had become. The leaked emails lifted the lid on a vicious and personal conflict. Some between climate scientists. Scientific meeting, I'll be tempted to beat the crap out of it. Very Most from those who don't believe mankind is warming the planet. I hope you get hit by an SUV. Burn in hell. Your head will be on a stake. Colleagues of Phil Jones, the scientist at the heart of the row, think there is a concerted campaign to undermine their credibility. I've developed a thick skin over the years. I'm used to being attacked uh, for uh, our work um, that uh, bolsters the claim for human-caused climate change. Um, I can take it, uh, but uh, nonetheless, um, it's, it's offensive, and uh, I think it's an attempt to intimidate climate scientists so that they won't go on and continue to refine our understanding of this problem. The row between the two campaigns flared up in public. Here, a confrontation erupts between Green protesters and Christopher Monckton, one of the leading skeptics. You are listening now to the shouts in the background of the Hitler Youth. I will call you Hitler Youth if you ever again interrupt any meeting at which I am present. Polar bears are increasing in number and the temperature is going down, not up. The row echoed across the media. It is being put over with such vehemence that there is naturally a reaction against it. Then a scandal that deepened public suspicion of climate science, Glaciergate. The United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, or IPCC, should be the home of verified science. Yet they said Himalayan glaciers would probably be gone by 2035 or sooner. In fact, though melting, they'll not disappear completely for centuries. This group, so trusted on climate science, had made a serious mistake which went uncorrected for years. The misstatement on the Himalayan glacier was a fundamental mistake that the authors that wrote the report should have not, not made, the peer reviewers should have copied it, so it was a failure and it was a human failure. So just how damaged is the science behind global warming? Whether it's the fuel bill or the fate of polar bears that troubles you, Let's try and sort the fact from the fantasy. Clear the fog a little. Let's go back to basics on the science of global warming. First up, where do those greenhouse gases come from which are blamed for warming the climate? To find out, I've come to meet the Rowe family. Keith, 
Shelley, Charlotte and Ellie. I'd like some environmental nanny from hell. I've arrived with a carbon dioxide meter. First for scrutiny, Keith. It's your exhaust. Yes. You've got the engine running. And currently this is telling us in the air around us we've got 20% oxygen. In effect, no carbon dioxide. There we go. And you can see now the carbon dioxide has gone up to close to 15% and oxygen has gone close to zero. So little doubt there's carbon dioxide coming out of this yeah, one. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> the hefty plasma might not be putting out much in here, but it does account for a wee bit at the power station, I reckon. Yeah. So this is another source of your greenhouse gas. Yeah, central heating. That's about 9%, actually. That's not bad. It's a high-efficiency boiler, which we're not long hard fitted. Well, it's not just our machines around the home that emit CO2. It's us as well. The normal level of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is around 400 parts per million, a little bit less. And we've got up to uh, 10,000 or so with these two here. No one here escapes our scrutiny, even Minnie, the family pet. So just about everything from exhaust to existence emits carbon dioxide. But what do we think is the result? How certain are you that mankind is warming the planet? Certain. Certain. Would you agree with that one? I'd say unlikely. You'd say unlikely? A little, little bit of nowhere, but unlikely. If it'll stick. So go on, why the difference? Why are you so convinced and why are you so doubtful? Shelley. I just think with everything you hear on the news that we seem to play a part in what everybody says about global warming. And I think, uh, I think it's all a, a lot of hype, to be honest. I think it's all to do with the n nature and the planet naturally heating up over thousands of years and then cooling down for thousands of years. And I think we're just on that bit where it's uh, heating up again. So, with opinions divided, I've come to London to judge the certainty of the science. And it turns out to have a long history. It was here in the basement of the Royal Institution where it was discovered that carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas. John Tyndall did the work and these are his very tools. He started by pumping gas from this apparatus into this tube. Heat was introduced at one end, the temperature was measured at the other. And what he discovered was that when carbon dioxide filled the tube, much more heat was absorbed than when there was just air inside. And that's the basic physics behind carbon dioxide's role in global warming. And since the fires of industry were lit and spread around the world, we've been making loads of it. This man believes the effect is a no-brainer. He chaired the IPCC for five years, he worked for Bill Clinton and Al Gore, now he's a science advisor to our government. So we've brought our wall of certainty to the Royal Institution. How certain are you that mankind is warming the climate? There's almost no question we cannot explain the observed changes in climate due to natural phenomena. Therefore, it's almost certain that we humans are changing the Earth's climate. I would certainly say it's something like 95% certain that we are changing the climate. How certain are you that carbon dioxide and other things are greenhouse gases, have a greenhouse effect? Absolutely 100% certain. Very, very simple physics tells you that these gases absorb infrared radiation and clearly lead to warming of the Earth's planet. If we didn't have water vapour and the other greenhouse gases today, we'd be 33 degrees colder, basically an uninhabitable planet. And how certain are you that we are emitting more carbon dioxide, one of the principal greenhouse gases? Absolutely certain. The way we're burning coal, oil and gas to produce energy, the way we're deforesting, especially in the tropics, there's absolutely no doubt that we humans are changing the atmospheric composition of carbon dioxide. Compelling evidence comes from the north. The Arctic ice cap is getting smaller and thinner. This is the extent of summer ice in the last 10 years. It's lost more than 10%. Sounds conclusive, yet there are serious scientists who disagree that global warming threatens our world. Professor John Christie is one of the skeptics' favourites. certainly not over. We have so much evidence that causes us to question a lot of these scary scenarios. 